to a municipal building meeting, a township meeting. We went with our friend, Vinny, and when we walked in, everything was fine. And about 18 minutes into the meeting, we started what I thought was the um, lights overhead short circuiting. And my husband said, it's not short circuiting, it's gunfire. So at that point, do you want me to stand? Would it be better? Okay. It's uh, feedback. So. Um, so anyway, about 18 minutes in, the, the gun was firing through one of the windows into the building, and we were sitting so basically sorry. underneath the lights that were shattering. At that point, my husband pushed me down, and it, the, the level of panic in the room was incredible. There were approximately 18, 20 people there, and um, we tried to, one of our friend, Vinny, who was with us, we had been in the Coast Guard and used to doing crisis, and he said, out the side door, because it sounded like the gunman was in the foyer area. Unfortunately, he was in the front of the building, and, he, and his strategy was to get anyone who was exiting the building where he was standing. As we left off the side fire exit, then he jumped and he was shot in midair. And before he hit the ground, needless to say, his life was gone. My husband and I continued back up the stairs and we were gonna go try to go out the other side of the building. And I was hit by a 223 caliber from an AR-15 in my leg. What happens at that point is that anything the 223 hits basically turns to gel, or if it hits bone, it turns to dust. It's obliterated. So as you can see, if you get close, and anybody's welcome to look at the damage if you want to, because I want people to know exactly what this does. We kind of sugarcoat the damage that's done to, to help the families that are surviving and losing their children too often. But if it does what it did to me, and it does the same thing to a child, it's not a surprise that many of these children, when you unfortunately read autopsies, are no longer recognized as human beings, especially if they've been hit multiple times. The damage done to my leg left parts of my bone gone, and I literally did not have the popliteal artery functioning, so I was bleeding out on scene. My husband tried to tourniquet anything he could do, and unfortunately, the gunman came back in the room after he'd already shot me. He was going to shoot me in the face. He was about a foot away. Something inside me just said, just talk calmly, and I did. I said, no more, mister. I've had enough. I didn't even know who it was. And at that point, he walked behind me, he exited out the door. I don't know what he went at that point, but my husband got up, he stood beside me. And when the gun went back, walked back in, he was gonna shoot me in the back of the head. And my husband jumped in front of the bullet and took it. It exploded his aorta in his stomach. He was dead also before he hit the ground. It's a horrible thing to go through being shot by any weapon but to watch your loved one die and especially knowing that they made the choice to give their life hoping you have a chance to survive is beyond anything you can imagine i can only imagine what these parents have gone through and it is enough when i finally was taken to the hospital by medvac nobody understood how i survived i don't know how i survived but i did it took two weeks in the hospital it took multiple surgeries. I don't even know for sure how many surgeries I had. All I know is the pain that I endured. And to this day, I endure. Because if I stay on the pain meds, which originally were cocktails of pain meds, you can't think. You can't do anything. You can't protect yourself. And I'm home. When I'm home by myself, I have my animals. I have my protection in my house of what I need to do to protect myself. However, if somebody comes in the door, I can't run. I can't do anything much to protect myself. And this is what we're dealing with day in and day out. I now have no husband. I hug a bear that my family members went and had his clothing made into the bear. And that's not enough. It's not enough for me. It never should have happened, but it did. So I speak and I'm gonna tell you exactly. If you wanna see the wound, you can see the wound. I even have pictures of somebody wants to see the pictures of what it was like 
after it was already uh, the surgery was done it's like ground meat it's literally ground meat and i'm just fortunate enough i'm a very determined person that i was able to start walking eventually i went from a wheelchair to a walker and now i use my cane there are days in my house i can walk myself but it has to be flat surface because i fall a lot because I choose not to be on the payments, because I choose, I have to be in control of my own life. These children had no decision-making in this whatsoever. And these parents had no decision-making in what happened to their children. No child should go to school to get an education and come home in a body bag. This is uncalled for. Five years later, how many years since Columbine? When does it end? And I have every right to say what I have to say because I know what it feels like when that bullet goes in your body. At first you feel numb. It's just a tiny bullet entry. But when it comes out, and I saw it, I saw it go in and I saw it go out. It's amazing what you will see your body. Just exit. It's uncalled for it and it should never happen to any child whatsoever. We have to make the laws on the books stick and we have to make changes to what is that's killing our children. Thank you so much for each one of you coming out. You should be proud of yourselves for speaking up for the voices that can no longer be heard. Thank you. Can we do another round of applause for Linda here? Thank you so much.